Right now, you've gone from standing and walking around to trying to get out the door like this, and you kind of just... Having anybody come in from the outside, but especially a STEM ambassador, because today was fun, is brilliant for the, for the students, but also for the staff. There's always problems, and that's the problem. You've got to think on your feet and be ready to solve them. This was no exception. My name is Jamie Pennell and I'm an advanced mechanical apprentice at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratories near Harwell in Oxfordshire. We're a government-based laboratory and currently I'm on the ISIS neutron and muon experiment. And that's where we use particles from a synchrotron going at about 33% the speed of light. It then sheds its electrons and becomes just a proton and is fired around the synchrotron until it reaches 88% the speed of light. And that's the point when it's released into the target station. My job is to help design, manufacture, install and maintain the scientific equipment for both the scientists and the facility as a whole. When I was at school, I didn't really have the careers opportunities that a lot of the kids in Oxfordshire have got now. I wasn't told anything about apprenticeships. I didn't want to go to university, I wanted to do something I could use my hands for. And that's where I came into apprenticeships and that led me on to uh, the science and technology side of it, which I really enjoyed. I've made myself known through the apprenticeship scheme to be quite happy to help out with these talks and shows and activities. So I was first asked to uh, give a speech at a Young Scientist Awards for Oxfordshire. And once I'd done that, I kind of got put on the mailing list and that was when I was properly inducted into the STEMnet Ambassador scheme. My first contact with the school was through uh, one of the teachers who helped me understand uh, what kind of kids would be there, what kind of time frame I'd have and helped me get any equipment that I needed. I get a picture that when I'm told I'd gone into a DT class to give an engineering talk, I imagine a group of boys and for a whole group of girls to turn up was, was a bit of a surprise for me. I've been asked to come in and do just a tiny little talk that's introducing some of the subjects that I talk about when I'm at work. Uh, before I start though, I'm just going to check how good your maths is. The students came in and I think they were slightly apprehensive to start with, not knowing what was going to happen. Excited, but um, a little bit rigid. Who knows Four. that one? Four. Four. Seven. 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 Jamie immediately put them at ease, uh, made them all relax. His delivery was fantastic. It was really humorous um, and inclusive. Oh my god! I can't do that. I can't do that. Anyone? No. What? Good. We're on the same playing field. When it comes to trying to get children interested in what you're doing, I find that the best way is to try and be relaxed about the subject, whilst, as much as it sounds kind of childish, blowing stuff up and throwing things is generally a good way to get children involved. I've seen a lot of shows where people have been throwing around paper as a particle interaction example or they've been breaking stuff as parts of engineering and it's really something that kids can enjoy, that things that make bang, things that they can really get involved with that, that makes them learn. We take something like concrete and as you can see it's all cracked so it's very very strong but if you stress it too much and try and bend it, it will crack. So what we've done is we've added something that bends, something that compresses, that you can pull, steel. The group is a textiles enrichment group and we're learning about the properties of textiles which actually very usefully brings us on to Jamie's activity and how the properties of certain materials will lend themselves to certain jobs. So the activity I'm planning is one that demonstrates material properties and how they might not become so apparent to uh, the outside viewer. Uh, shows that I've done before have involved gases and liquids that I can bring from various other places on the lab and prove how they're all different, but now I'm in a school, I've got to choose something else. Now that reminds me a little bit of wafer chocolate. I don't know about you guys, uh, it looks a lot like wafer chocolate. So I've decided that chocolate bars would be the best way, as they're all built of many different properties, like the kind of materials we use for building and engineering. So you've got all the ingredients in it that make it more of a composite material to give it all sorts of different taste properties is what they go for, but I'm looking at the mechanical properties, how I can break it, set fire to it, crush it, things like that. If we look at what's in different chocolate, so the main one, chocolate, it's the glue that holds it all together. It's not so strong and it's not so bendy, but it does hold it all together. Toffee and caramel, nice and bendy. I find when I'm working at the labs that I do have a whole heap of resources at my disposal. I get on well with a lot of people on site. 
So I've got pretty much everything that I'm allowed to use with the students at my disposal. So when it comes to leaving and going to a school, I find that my resources are much more limited, but it's so easy to find the science and the engineering in everyday life. So you can take something that seems so simple and put an idea behind it that you wouldn't usually think about, such as building a bridge out of chocolate. What I want you to do, I want you to put some weights on it until it breaks. I've never been given a full class to myself before. I've been given an auditorium full of students, but I've never had to try and involve everyone and try and get them all thinking at the same time whilst having a demonstration, whilst having a PowerPoint, whilst trying to load up a graph. So hopefully it'll teach them something <laughs> and myself. Two, three. Is that? <laughs> this was a terrible idea. A lot of things could go wrong, and something always does. So it's a case of making sure there's some kind of backup or some way that it can still progress, even if there is a hiccup. So I always take along everything that I possibly need on my memory stick. I always take along more than I need when it comes to the actual activities, and I always ensure I have a nice ball of twine with me because it always comes in handy. Expecting this one to be quite strong, actually. The best way to approach a school for new ideas would be to have an idea already on the table, an activity, maybe half planned, but something that you can really grab the teacher's attention with, something that would make them excited about it, not just have another person come into their class. Right, let's try crushing some stuff then, shall we? Oh, now somebody wants to crush something. I think the best way to come in for a new ambassador would be to stick with what you're aware of. Try and take something that you do every day and try and adapt it into something that students can do. Also, you needed to know what kind of equipment would be available to me while I was on site. That's buckled. With the chocolate, I had to ask if there were any allergy problems. Um, I couldn't have students having that nut allergies or milk allergies in the room for obvious reasons. Let's say the building catches fire by accident. As adults, we're kind of programmed that the world is the way it is and we can't change it. And they come up with some brilliant ways of solving things. So you can put forward the idea of a bridge made of chocolate and they won't say that can't be done. They'll try and come up with the best bar to put where. I didn't realise chocolate was so flammable, but yeah. And I, I enjoy seeing that kind of fresh mindedness and it is something I can really take back to my job. So we're going to make the top out of crunchy. We're going to make the supports out of Mars. Mars. All right, let's not, let's not put whose favourite chocolate bars into this. We're not eating the bridge, we're, we're driving a car across the bridge. My general thoughts on um, Jamie's activity was that it was absolutely beautiful. It was brilliant. His delivery was light, it was funny, and he made it completely relevant. If I was running this activity myself or had to make any kind of changes to it at all, I would probably make it even more interactive and I would try and elicit the understanding from the students. Um, possibly even make it um, bring literacy into it and get them to write some of the, you know, try and summarise what they've learned and write it up on the board. When it's not the same teacher that gives the same lesson, you learn different stuff, like each teacher teaches differently, um, like they have their own strategies, so I think it was nice to like take away different types of strategies of teaching. I quite enjoyed like crushing the chocolate and like seeing I was quite interested as to how the chocolate was actually, how strong the chocolate actually was because I didn't actually think chocolate was very strong. I enjoy doing it because uh, it kind of puts my name out there. Everyone at work who's higher up knows who I am because I'm happy to help volunteer. It's better, I think, to teach the kids about all the jobs that are out there and where they can go. Because when I was growing up, it was all, you have to go to uni, you have to go to uni. I would love to have another session. This was my first one with a STEM ambassador in my class. I would love to have a second one, uh, maybe as a follow-up, building on what we've learnt um, in this activity. 